Well, welcome back to another Gibbs Adventures. I'm out today breaking trail. I figured I'd set all my trails first and then I'll come back and set because you run into stuff like this where there's a log across the trail and uh, it's easier to pull a sleigh full of gear. Got a set right here. It's easier to pull a sleigh full of gear around when you have a trail than it is to try and break trail and set traps. So I'm going to spend a few hours today setting up my trail, cleaning it all out, getting it all organized, and then I'll know if I have to bring spare boxes or if I have to bring extra pieces, it'll all be good. So it'll be an easier day tomorrow. I'll probably do about 40 kilometers of trail. Some of it's broke by other skidoers, a lot of it's just like this, just trail that I break and then I use. So welcome along. So I made it exactly about 20 more meters and buried my machine in the beaver pond where the creek comes in. I was hopeless, I ended up walking out, what a nightmare. Okay, you can read about it in the next issue of Trapper Post. I wrote a story, I got so excited being stuck that I just forgot to film the rest of what happened, but you can see my in and out picture from getting into the hole and then you can see the hole that I finally got out of. I had to call for help, I had to walk three kilometers in fresh trail, so you'll see how my adventure went. Well, do you think we had much snow last year? I was kind of chuckling. I went in to make this set. And uh, you can see it's basically over my head. So we had a lot of snow last year when I made this. Always a great feeling when you go to set and there's fisher tracks right there. So my, my set's just in here. So I'm going to set it up, should be good to go. Nothing to get you more excited than setting on sign. You see my set in there, it's another high one because uh, last winter I might have to lower them. They're just a little bit too high. Well you can see the old trail's plugged up here, a couple branches in the way, but I have a double set here. I have a white pail on this side of the trail and then Right in there you can see my Martin box. And I do that on purpose because you don't know how many times you miss. And this is right at the edge of a lake here. So, get this cleared out here. Get on my way. So make up my two sets and all's good. All in along, boys. Well, this is about as much as my little saw can handle. I like my little still, but uh, when you start getting into stuff this big, it's pretty hard to uh, to cut it. And uh, there was no way that I could go over this log without cutting it. I had to, had to make about five cuts here to get this thing cut. So if it wasn't for trappers keeping trails open, this goes from one lake to another and the guys use it all the time. But you can see nobody's come through because of all the logs down. So not everybody carries a chainsaw, but I do. And here we go. Good workout anyways. Well, I literally just ran out of gas with my saw. But that's the last tree I had to cut because if you look in front of us, you can see where on my trail is. That's where I got to yesterday. So I'm able to link up and I made my loop now. So now all I have to do is just set it all up the way I want it. But uh, about a tank of gas is about my, and what's snow like this is about my limit, so I'm happy to be done. That's it for today, heading home. So as you can see from my trail, in front of me, there's a ton of slush on the lake. Us Canadians like to call it slush, my American friends call it overflow. Either way, if you get stuck in it, it sucks the big one, so. I'm happy I got my loop completed. I'll be able to come back now and set all my sets. I like to break my trail and cut all the logs out and then come back around and, uh, and set it up. So, yippee we made her. I just got a blast down the lake. My machine goes good in slush. I just can't stop and, uh, and play around here. I can't video for sure. I'd have to, I put myself in big trouble here. So, that's got to blow through it. All good. So, heading back. So, talk tomorrow. So I just made up a little modification here. I've had this one for a while. 
so I can carry my chainsaw. Works good. And now I've added this one so that I can carry my pruners. And it works out pretty good. They're on the back of my machine. They're not in harm's way. And uh, it's just a little modification I made. I might adjust it. I may make it a bit narrower yet, but uh, it works pretty good. Allows me to uh, be able to reach back. Before I had them inside the box and they always got caught and every time I tried to pull them out it was just a hassle. So now that I have them on the outside, it should be easier to go. So you can always make improvements and here's a little one that I just made. Uh, hopefully I'll try it out and I'll, I'll know the results. A great day to be out in the bush here. Just working along my trail. Now one of the reasons that I switched to 160 size traps was because it would damage the marten, especially the females on the 220. So I went to 160s and uh, you can see perfect catch here. Good size male. Nice little throw patch. And you can see my catch is hung nice and high. No mouse damage, not worried about that at all. And actually I can see some fisher tracks right beside it. So I never know what I'm going to catch. Sometimes I get marten, sometimes I get uh, fisher. So the 160 for me was the trap that I wanted to try. And so far this year it's proven itself out well. But you can see the, the uh, fisher tracks are right there. He was checking this out. They're fresh, fresh on the snow, so he might even have been around. Lucky for me, I got here before he decided to eat my marten. Hopefully he would have ate my nice big chunk of bait, but you never know. But uh, right on, nice catch. I'll take it out of the trap here, or switch it out, depends if he's frozen in there, and uh, carry on. So just to show you, I'm going to walk out here. This is where the fisher was at today. And you can see he kind of really checked it out. My set's right there on the pole. So hopefully I have him the next check. It's another mild day. It's probably zero degrees Celsius. So for my uh, American friends, I guess that's 36 degrees Fahrenheit. But uh, good to go. Hopefully got him in the next check. I'm ready anyways. So, nice beauty catch, nice big fat marten. I was here two days ago. Take that any day of the week. Oh, got us on some freezer burnt sausages. <laughs> so, good to go. Change the trap. Noticed, uh, how he's hanging and he's not touching anything. That's always what I'm trying to achieve here. It's my uh, bucket sets. I have both Martin and Fisher in this area, so I try to uh, I try to uh, set for both of them. And that's hence why I went with the 160. I'll just do a quick reset here. I don't think he's even frozen the trap. It's pretty fresh. Okay, we can change it. 
Nice big mail, pretty stove. So 30, almost 35 kilometers to my first set. And I got a nice Martin. I had missed one here, my last run, but uh, I got him this time, so yippee ki -yay. Shut the machine off, less noise. Beautiful day. Always a good day when you get a Martin. Martin's frozen, so I have to make sure I take it out in the trap. Today I was smart enough to remember a fur bag to stick it in. I think it's always important to Stuff in the fur bag, good to go. Next set, check back in later. So I'm in the process of uh, modifying my sets. And of course, I took the lazy way here and I didn't uh, fix it, so here's the results. So I caught my bait. Now, the problem for me is that the set is on too much of an angle. So you always have to be thinking about continuous improvements. Um, in this case here, because I took the easy route and I didn't uh, fix this box, I gotta get change this setup here to a flatter set so that it doesn't, uh, what happens is the bait wants to roll into the trap and then you miss. So there's the results. So I figured I'd show you that. You should always be critical of your sets and make sure they're solid and make sure they're effective. This one sucks. I'll have to fix it next run.